So now we're going to contemplate the mechanism of a Markovnikov addition of water across a triple bond and why you end up with the ketone product. It starts as you'd expect with the triple bond attacking the mercury. The mercury, of course, has a pair of electrons on it, which allows it to make a weird intermediate. And this intermediate will be cationic in nature. So we could imagine drawing that as follows. Then, of course, what needs to happen is that water needs to add. And so this particular reaction in involves water as a solvent and the presence of plenty of acid, sulfuric acid, for example. And so the water comes in and adds, and I'm being a little bit sloppy about the direction in which things add, but basically water ends up displacing the mercury. And that will then lead to another cationic intermediate. And in this case, what we have is now a water having added. So the water has pluses on it. And there's a mercury band over here. Okay, now we have some more water around so we can move protons around as we see fit. There's another water molecule nearby. It will come and deprotonate this one, which pushes electron density onto that oxygen. The result of this step where water deprotonates is that you now have protonated water floating right around the mercury enol species. This mercury enol species can in fact abstract a proton using the double bond to do so. And when it does that, what will happen is that the oxygen will kick down at the same time. This double bond has a fair amount of electron density because of the nearby alcohol. So what we're doing here is essentially a keto-enol tautomerization, but one that leads to a ketone with a mercury bound. But of course, if you're looking at the structure and you see that this oxygen desperately would like to have some electron density, then maybe the mercury simply provides that electron density. This shows the mercury leaving as the electrons that were bound between carbon and mercury now go to make a double bond and that kicks electrons up. And so where you end up now, finally, after all of this, is that you have made a legitimate enol species. So again, what has happened is you did a keto enol tautomerization here and you had a mercury keto species, but this was protonated and has a plus on it. So when the mercury just plain leaves, that then leads to an enol. So we are once again here at enol. And then this final step is another keto enol tautomerization. In the presence of sulfuric acid, of course, we know that the water will become protonated. So we will have plenty of the protonated water floating around. And so this enol will react much as it did before. The oxygen will collapse collapse down using the electrons of the nearby double bond to become protonated, which then leads to the protonated ketone species. The ketone species can then become deprotonated by a nearby water and you have arrived at the final product. So the moral of the story is that the first initial step is exactly the same as with the double bond and that leads to a mercury species that's cationic. Water then adds to that species, which then leads to what amounts to a protonated enol. You do a proton transfer, water removes one of the protons. That leads to this mercury enol. The enol then picks up a proton from a nearby acidic water, a hydronium, and when it does that, it converts into a mercury-bound ketone. But then the mercury can just leave to give electron density to the oxygen, which takes you to the enol. And then the last two steps are just simply keto enol tautomerization of the normal variety. And that's the mechanism for addition of water across a triple bond with mercury.